It's a great honor for me to be here. Um, this is my first visit to India, believe it or not. I've wanted to come for many years, but somehow um, the things just didn't work out. But we had this wonderful uh, conference in New Delhi this past week, uh, the Warlock Global Rust Initiative workshop. And uh, both Jessica and I work on that project. And so we came to, for that conference. And since um, uh, I'd heard so much about TNAU and the Wellington Station, and Dr. Siva Sami spent time with us. Um, I thought it would be uh, Dr. Uh, Babu. Just thought that it would be a good opportunity for me to tell you a little bit about Cornell, a little bit about our department, and then lastly a little bit about some of our research. So, so I'm going to start with a little overview of the Department of Plant Breeding and Genetics. Um, our department was established in 1907. Um, we're located in Ithaca, New York. Uh, we have had many famous scientists in our department over the years. Um, on the right is our field location. On the left is Bradfield Hall, where our research labs are. And in the middle is uh, uh, Rollins Emerson and his famous students, Barbara McClendick, uh, Charles Burnham, Marcus Rhodes and George Beadle. In our department, we have 10 regular faculty. Um, many of you know some of them. Um, we, eight, we have eight faculty who, whose home is another department, but they have joint membership in plant breeding. We also have 17 adjunct members. Adjunct members of our department are employed by another institution or another agency, but they're affiliated with our department. And then we also have five uh, emeriti professors. We have, uh, in our department, we have a number of facilities required for doing plant breeding research, including laboratories in Bradfield, Emerson Hall, um, we have a greenhouse and growth chamber facilities and about 300 acres of farmland that we use for uh, our field work. We also have a core facility where there's sequencing, proteomics, microarray facilities, and so forth. In our department, we currently have about 50 graduate students. And our graduate students, we try to give them the entire range of experience from uh, lab to greenhouse to field. We try to help them to get experience with uh, public speaking, with uh, teaching, so that they can leave Cornell with uh, a, a, a really good background in, in uh, research and, and teaching. We have field crop programs. Uh, we don't have as many field crop programs as you do, but we have a few. Um, Dr. Byans, Don Byans, and Julie Hansen, uh, they run the uh, forage program, which includes alfalfa, tree foil, the clovers, and biofuels crops. On the maize uh, program, both Rebecca Nelson, who is housed in the Department of Plant Pathology, and Margaret Smith, uh, they both have uh, breeding programs in maize, breeding and genetics. Rebecca Nelson also works in sorghum, and I work on uh, the small grains, oats, wheat, barley, triticale, and more recently, emmer, einkorn, and spelt. Uh, a couple of things that Margaret, Margaret Smith works on include uh, population improvement for disease and insect resistance, tolerance to abiotic stress. And she also works in the area of organic farming, uh, sustainable agriculture, and she has a number of international collaborations. Uh, some of you know Susan McCooch. Susan works on genetics of rice. Um, her, the focus of her program is in introgressing exotic germplasm. And she works with people in several different companies, including Africa, China, Brazil, 
Korea, Indonesia, Colombia, and uh, uh, is focused mainly on introgressing genes from a rice of pogon into cultivated rice. In the vegetable side of things, um, Michael Mazurik works on peppers, cucurbits, and also on peas. Martha, Martha Mushler works on tomatoes and onions, and Walter DeYoung works on potatoes. One of Michael's products is this habanero pepper without the capsaicin, so it does not have the spicy flavor that a normal, normal habanero has. This is one of uh, the vegetable squash varieties that was released from Cornell in, in 2002. One of, Mar uh, one of Martha Mutchler's projects is to introgress genes for bacterial leaf blight from Allium rodii into cultivated onion. She also works on insect resistance, and the insect resistance in her program is based on trichomes, uh, trichomes that have um, sticky substance, but also trichomes that have that repel the insects. Uh, Walter DeYoung has released several potato varieties. Here's a couple of examples of his pigmented potatoes. And Wojtek Pawlowski works on maize genetics. And the focus of his research program is on the genetics controlling meiosis in maize. Ronnie Kaufman is um, the director of international programs at Cornell. He's also the leader of the durable rust resistance and wheat project that organized the VGRI workshop that we had in New Delhi. In that project, um, uh, he's the P primary PI on the durable rust resistance and wheat project, and, and I'm sure many of you have heard about the UG99 race of stem rust that is devastating susceptible wheat varieties in Africa and has the potential to be uh, uh, to infect and destroy 80% of the varieties of wheat in the world. So this is a very serious pathogen, and it's already spread throughout Africa and into Iran, and it's right on India's doorstep. So we're working with scientists here in India to incorporate resistance into the uh, Indian wheat varieties. Another project in the international programs is the agricultural Biotechnology Support Project. This project is funded by USAID, and it has the goal of evaluating, introducing and evaluating GMO crops into developing countries. One of those projects you're very familiar with is the uh, fruit and shoot borer resistant eggplant project. Um, they also work on uh, BT genes in, uh, for other crops. Um, they have many. Uh, they have multi-location trials here in India, and uh, they also are working with people in the Philippines. On, on the small grains project, I have um, three technicians, uh, three postdocs, and um, I believe that's up to nine graduate students now. Um, Philemon Giuliano, who many of you know, just joined us. She completed her master's degree last spring uh, in a joint degree program with PNAU and Cornell. And then I also have two undergraduates. In my program, my, the focus of my research is breeding strategies. So we look at things like genomic selection, marker-assisted selection, we do QTL mapping, um, work on recurrent selection. Some of the traits include, obviously, grain yield, but also pre-harvest sprouting resistance, resistance to fusarium head blight. Um, we're working on nutritional quality traits, um, a little bit of work on uh, 
uh, seed size and shape, stem rust, and then uh, we have a small project on virus and these gene silencing. I mentioned that uh, the focus of my research is on breeding strategies, and breeding strategies change over time as technologies and uh, uh, information is accumulated, and currently our breeding strategies are driven by the use of molecular markers and statistical genomics techniques. We're also interested in using uh, whole genome genotyping to better understand genotype by environment interaction, genetic relationships, and how we can improve the accuracy of our genomic prediction models. Since I've been at Cornell, I've released several different wheat varieties. Um, currently, Otsego is our most popular variety. We have approval to release um, uh, a new line for next year. And uh, I work with the University of Illinois to release oat varieties. Um, five of those varieties are shown here. NUDAC was actually a co-release co with North Dakota State and we released one winter bonnet variety. Um, we do have a number of projects, uh, grant-funded projects, and I've mentioned uh, the Gates-funded durable rust resistance and wheat project, but they also fund a project, a collaboration that we have with CIMIT on implementing genomic selection in their wheat and maize breeding programs. Um, we have a, I have a project with the McKnight Foundation, and this is to teach marker-assisted selection to scientists in Ethiopia, and that's for improvement of TEF. Our Hatch Project is a federally funded um, breeding program. We have a USDA-funded uh, project called Value-Added Grains for Local and Regional Food Systems, and this involves evaluating uh, heritage varieties of hexafloid wheat, spelt, emmer, and einkorn under organic management conditions. And this is, very, this is a very new project, a very new kind of research for the northeastern U.S. And so we're just beginning to learn about how to produce some of these kinds of grains under organic conditions. We are part of a very large national project funded by the USDA called the uh, uh, Tritacy Cat Project. It's uh, wheat and body germplasm for changing environments. And in that project, there are 29 principal investigators uh, scattered across the entire U.S., all working on wheat and barley to implement genomic selection and select for nitrogen use efficiency and water use efficiency. We also have a, what, what's called a Northeast uh, Sustainable Agriculture Research Project, and that is for doing participatory breeding on the farm and also producing high-quality seed for organic uh, farming. We recently were funded by USAID to work on developing heat-tolerant uh, wheat varieties for South Asia. So we'll have experiments in Ludhiana, uh, Pusa, and I believe Jabalapur, if I remember. This is a collaboration with Senate also. And then finally, uh, we just got a new project funded by the Pepsi company, and that is to develop uh, and evaluate uh, oat varieties for nutritional quality. So those are our funded projects. Um, so just to summarize some of the work that we're doing, we're working on multifamily GS, which does predictions across families. Um, we are working with dominant male sterile populations to do recurrent selection in wheat. Uh, our research uh, in, in, in uh, genomic selection also involves uh, evaluating uh, new approaches to uh, incorporating uh, information about genotype by environment interaction. 
modeling uh, those interactions using climatic variables and um, optimizing the training population. Part of Jessica's work has been involved genotyping by sequencing and imputing missing data using uh, different kinds of algorithms. We also compare different marker platforms and uh, look at different traits with different kinds of trait uh, genetic architecture. I mentioned some of the traits. Fusarium head bite is one. Um, Jessica has done some work on uh, evaluating genomic selection models for predicting resistance to fusarium head bite. Um, she also works on recurrent selection for adult plant resistance to stem rust, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. Um, and we also have a project to pyramid major genes for stem rust resistance so that we have varieties that have at least three or more major genes for resistance so that we can hopefully uh, have durable stem rust resistance. And we're also studying gene interactions for stem rust resistance. And one of Philemon's projects as a master's degree student was to look at um, a trait called pseudo black chab and leaf tip necrosis and its relationship to stem rust resistance. Um, I mentioned uh, we are also working on spell MR9 corn. We're going to be evaluating some of the products made with those grains for their flavors. And uh, we've initiated a participatory breeding program. So I just want to show you a few pictures. Some of you will uh, recognize Dr. Siva Sami here on the left, and uh, Dr. Puwan Kolwal, who also spent um, about a year with us, and he worked on pre harvest sprouting while he was there. Now, up in the upper right, they were out in the field collecting samples for pre harvest sprout testing. Let's see, there's Dr. Siva Sami threshing some wheat there on the right. And this is actually our, uh, on the upper left is our fusarium headlight field where we score different wheat varieties for fusarium resistance. And there's Dr. Coolwall again. And this is Jessica in the Kenya stem rust nursery um, evaluating her materials for stem rust resistance. And in the upper left is, some of, is, a, is a picture of uh, uh, my lab group a couple of years ago. This is a more recent picture of our lab group. You can see Jessica is there, and I believe I believe that uh, Dr. Palwan had already left, so he's not in the picture. So that's an overview of some of the work that we've been doing in my breeding program. Um, let's see, these are. This, this, I'm going to move on to the other. The other. Um,